Welcome back everybody. We're going to show you different ways to dip bisque into your glazed tank. We do want a quick in and out. I grew up using dipping tongs. This is my jam. Now I know a lot of people don't like them or they're not comfortable with them, but I had all of my staff trained and this is how we did it. For a couple reasons. When I'm dipping this mug, I don't want to handle it any more than I have to. If I did your traditional, just kind of dipped it in and this handle wasn't done, you're either going to have to come back and dip the handle or you're going to need a soft fan brush to fan it out. So if you use a dipping tong, you're going to basically get a little death grip. I try to put these sharp little pieces where it's not as obvious, okay? So it's going to be closer to the handle or underneath the handle, not here where all your design work is. With all of the glazes, you want a quick dipping in and out. So I kind of went in and back out. If you have a good grip on here, and it does build your muscle up a little bit, you're gonna try to shake off any excess. Notice I kept the inside of the mug down so that it ran back out. If you came up and left it like this, you could potentially have the glaze go down to the bottom of the bisque and it'd be too, um, too thick, and that's where you get some crawling, okay? To fix that, what you would do is just touch up the bare spot with the clear glaze and refire it. Pretty easy fix, but you don't wanna have to spend more time touching this stuff, right? Now, I do have a little drip here where the glaze was on the tong. You can either just use your finger or have a soft fan brush that has been dipped in the clear glaze and touch it up. And then what you're going to do you just set it down, release the tongue, and pull it out. Now here's where you can make a mistake. If you don't open the tongue and you pull it up, you can rake and scrape off some of the glaze. I always keep a towel or a sponge nearby and wipe these tips off because I've got the glaze from here and then the next one I could transfer little dots. But look how this is done, okay? Beautiful. You set it on your drying racks this is nice because if you're just going to do a couple of pieces, it's handy. What I would have are shelves back here with some paper and then my drying racks on top of them. That way, weekly, monthly, or whatever, you can take the paper, throw it away, and keep your um, dip shelves nice and clean, okay? And then repaper it. Okay, I have a little spot right here where I would touch up with my soft fan brush. All right, so that's using a tong. I'm going to show you what we call a half dip. I don't, it's not my favorite because again, you're touching this piece more and more. You can use gloves, which I highly recommend having gloves so that you're not constantly sticking your hand in the glaze. But you can take your piece. You go in halfway. Uh, this turned out to be a little bit more of three quarters. Gonna shake off your excess glaze. This glaze is really nice because it's staying open just enough that I could correct some dips or drips with my soft fan brush, but it's not staying open so long that it's gonna take forever to dry. Because at this point, I can touch this right here. I could come back. And whenever you do a half or a three quarter dip, you're gonna to want to dip it back in where it just kisses and touches against that and not overlap because then you've got two layers of glaze and that's where you're gonna get your hazy line. So to me, this is a little trickier. See, and I took too long. Okay, so if you can see, here's a little overlap. You can see the line, this is gonna be thicker and here I didn't get it quite even. So I do think the half dip can be a little challenging. I'm gonna use my soft fan brush, just kind of touch up the area that I didn't get it. And I am going to try to fan this out a little bit. I really don't want that hard line. It's going to show, it's gonna be a little hazier, okay? So that's one reason why I really like doing one fluid dip. So that is the half dip. With items like this that are just decorative, you can hold it by the bottom. 
and I'm going to have to make sure that I get that out from the inside. So you can just use your hands to dip this. This is easy because the bottom of it I can easily come back and touch up. When you have the faceted pieces, the glaze can easily collect in the crevices or the recessed areas and have a haze to it. So you want to definitely make sure that you um, flick the extra glaze off of there. So I have a spot right there where my hand was touching that I didn't really get it very well. So I can touch that up with my soft fan brush and set this off to the side. You're going to set everything off to the side and let it dry. Look how nice this is though. This is awesome. I can touch it really quickly. I'm not going to leave fingerprints and that will allow me to move the pieces around on my shelf so that you can keep dipping. Okay. When you have a vase, vases can be tricky because you're in and out, right? You want to do it very quickly. A couple of things that I recommend. If you take foundation glaze and thin it down, three parts glaze, one part water, and I would do white because your bisque is white, pour it in, roll it around, completely coat the inside of this, and then dump it into a pot and only mix up what you need at the time. I would do this in my studio and pre-glaze the inside of all the bases prior to the customer coming in. So that way, when I went to have, I needed to dip it, instead of trying to get in there, scoop it in, fill my vase, get it back out, get everything out in a very quick fluid moment, all I have to do is, bada bing, my vase is now dipped inside is already glazed and if the customer wanted to create some color inside of it the neck of it not a problem that's what I highly suggest all right look at that how nice is that oh, I'm loving this stuff so as you can see you can use your fingers and I'm going to show you the complete dip with this piece so I'm going to hold it again where it's going to be probably the least noticeable trying to have as minimal amount of touching with my skin or my hands. I'm going to go in. My hand is submerged. I'm going to shake this. You can also do the rock and roll or kind of driving my car. Shake that excess off. And then when I set it down, I've got some drips here and you can see right there let me bring that under so you can see right there that's where my finger was I'm gonna come back with my soft band fan brush touch that up I'm probably gonna try to smooth out those drips a little bit also love it okay once again if you have any questions email us contact us at makeo info at makeocolors.com happy dipping <laughs>